So top three seeds in Montreal are out. Daniil Medvedev losing to Nick Kyrgios out. Carlos Alcaraz losing to Tommy Paul in a very good match. We'll talk about it out. Stefano Tsitsipas out losing to Jack Draper. Should Stefanos or Carlos fans be worried? Now, I think that's something we should talk about and I will get into later on in this video, but we're gonna take a look at the carnage that happened, has happened so far in Montreal. Take a look at who's remaining. What are the odds for who's gonna win now that the top three seeds are out? So welcome to The Slice presented by Points Bet Canada. Let's get into it. Hey guys, this is Kasper Ruud. Hey, it's Denis Shapovalov. And welcome to The Slice. Thanks for being here, people. What a tournament, what a start to the tournament. In, in both sides, we got Toronto, the WTA, Montreal, uh, the ATP, and the big news of the week, Serena Williams is retiring after the US Open. That's, uh, I think I'll do a bigger video on that once she actually does retire, we see what happens at the US Open. She lost last night to Bencic, so probably played her last ever match in Canada. They sold out the crowd there. They, they sold out the stadium in Toronto, which is awesome. So the Toronto fans showed up and paid their respects to arguably the GOAT, um, on the women's side, and so that's cool for the city of Toronto. Bianca Andreescu made it through on the Canadian side. Leila Fernandez did not. Um, but today on this show, I'm going to be focusing more on the men. So thanks for being here. And if you haven't yet, I have an ask for you. Can you help us out by going to Twitter and following at the Slice Tennis? It's like the company, the Slice Twitter account. Uh, really want to get that to over a thousand. So go there and help us out by doing that. If you're on Twitter, post all these uh, updates and stuff and fun stuff like that on there. And the slice is presented by Points Bet Canada during the US Open swing, the series, the US Open series. And so shout out to them. If you're on in, in Ontario, join Points Bet Canada and tell them you, that we sent you. Um, but looking at the top now with the top three guys, odds to win the tournament. Nick Kyrgios is the odds favorite now to win Toronto, as Points Bet has it at 3.25 times your money outright from now on. And then it goes Nick Kyrgios, Yannick Sinner, Taylor Fritz, Hubert Hurkacz. And then Felix Auger Ali seem pretty at 13 to 1. Hubert at 9 to 1. Taylor at 7 to 0.5. I think they got Kyrgios. That's pretty high up there. I don't know. He, I, in my opinion, he could lose to Alex Diemenauer in the next round or Hukash in the in the quarterfinals. So let's look at the big three losses though, because you know it's the new big three. But some people are saying the ATP is coming becoming more like the WTA now, where it's just like anyone can beat anyone, anyone can lose at any time. Um, I think. There's a little bit of truth to that, but I think that the Toronto mat like this, or the Canadian Masters is the first big tournament that a lot of these guys played since coming off of clay or grass. Um, and that is the case for Stefanos. I know this was his first match, um, first tournament on hard. Tommy Paul, this, or sorry, Alcaraz, this was his first tournament on hard since playing clay after Wimbledon. Um, but Kyrgios beats Medvedev. That was a super interesting match. I did a live watch party. If you didn't catch that, go back and catch it. It was super fun. Thank you guys for all coming to hang out. Um, the big storyline there was both guys won a tournament last week. Kyrgios has obviously been super hot, super dangerous. Medvedev is the number one player in the world. Um, Medvedev kind of destroyed Kyrgios when they played in Australia. And today though, or last night, Kyrgios came out with a clear game plan. He served and volleyed basically every single point on his first serve, a lot of second serves as well. And you're kind of thinking now after, you know, if he didn't do that, imagine he just served and started the points a little bit more and stayed back. Uh, there would have been so many more longer rallies. Medvedev would have felt more comfortable. So it's kind of like, seemed like the serve and volley was Kyrgios's like main advantage in that match. And like the main, only way he could really probably get an advantage. Um, so, that, so it worked very well, obviously. He won the match. Um, he got the early break in the second set, won that set, and then kind of pulled away with it after saving some breaks points in the beginning of the third set. So it could have gone either way. Obviously, it was a close match. But the question to me, if you're looking at from Medvedev's side, I don't think Medvedev, and Kiro said this after the match, I don't think Medvedev played his best tennis today. And I especially think that on his return. In Australia... Kyrgios didn't serve volley as much, but Medvedev was totally able to smother Kyrgios with his return, just getting so many things back in play. I didn't see that last night. Um, I'm not even going to look at the stats, but just what I saw, I saw a lot of second serve return total misses from Medvedev, which is very rare. And 
he with even with the first serve, I think he really felt the pressure of the serve and volley. So that's that's a huge bonus for Kyrgios. That's he's kind of making Medvedev get off his return game a little bit. Um, but one thing that really confuses me, and I tweeted this out earlier, is I know that Medvedev has the hands to be able to stand in on the baseline and return and take an aggressive return position, but he just doesn't seem to do it. And you would think in a match like that last night where he was getting outplayed on that serve return exchange by Kyrgios coming forward so much and putting so much pressure, you'd think that maybe he'd want to try that out. You know, he's obviously got to number one in the world by standing far back and returning. That's So it's a good strategy. I'm not saying that he shouldn't do that. I, want, I don't want to be one of those commentators. I remember it, I think it was Alcaraz versus Sender, the commentator kept being like, the guy's standing too far back. He's got to come in. This isn't that. It's just that I think seeing a match like last night where Medvedev only got two break points all match on the Kyrgios serve, you would think that maybe that'll that'll change something in his mind where it's like, well, I have the hands. Like he had, Medvedev has some of the best hands. The way he like swings his backhand or hits his forehand and squares the face of his racket to hit the ball, like he's able to do that. And if he was able to stand on the baseline or just be super aggressive, um, I think that would really, that would have taken away the serve and volley in a lot of parts from Kyrgios and maybe, you know, gave Medvedev a huge, huge advantage. So I'm interested to see why he doesn't do that more. And I'm interested to see if he will deploy that in the future if they play again, which would obviously be super exciting. So that's interesting to me, that dynamic there. Um, Kyrgios did amazingly well there and served very good again as he has been serving well. Medvedev pressure as number one, I think he feels it. I, I don't know. I think it's just hard to win and hard to stay on the top and everyone gets up for you. Like Kyrgios got up for this match, obviously. Um, so, he, so Medvedev does stay number one after this loss, but just barely. Um, and Kyrgios. Kyrgios is in the prime of his career. It's just amazing to see him focused, fit, working on off the court with his trainer, as he says. His girlfriend keeps him amazingly happy, stable. And you're kind of now, part of me is looking back. It's like, what did we miss? Like what, if Kyrgios had done this his whole career, I think he'd have a couple majors at this point, obviously. Um, obviously, I think. Um, he's just got the talent to do it, clearly. Um, and what could have been, you'll never know. But, you know, he's going to go to the U.S. Open being one of the guys that's hardest to stop, for sure. But I think on the hard court, the rest of the field's going to have a better chance uh, against him. So we'll see. But, yeah, great win for Kyrgios. Uh, another big scalp, as he likes to get him. And, yeah, tough loss for Medvedev. He loses 990 points or 950 points from winning this last year, but he'll, he's going to go into Cincinnati looking to win that tournament. So I think he's going to be okay. It's a tough loss, um, but he'll be all right. Tommy Paul beats Carlos Alcaraz. What a high-level match. That was crazy. We had Julian on the ground. You guys know we have people on the ground in Toronto and Montreal. Julian was courtside for this match, sending us videos. I might include some here, might not. Um, just crazy points. Both guys, such good movers, such good athletes. Tommy Paul said afterwards that, you know, Carlos is the fastest player he's seen. He thinks that, you know, nobody else on tour was going to get some of these balls back that Carlos was getting back. So just high praise. And the level is just quite high. Carlos didn't, you know, he's spraying a lot of balls, but Tommy was able to, and he said afterwards, he was able to take it to him and he was able to hit big. Speed balling, which I've been talking about, is kind of something that players can do to get through Carlos's armor and kind of take the weapons out of his hand. Tommy was able to do that for a lot of the match. Um, lost the first set in a tight tie break and then went down early in the second set. Apparently, Coach Brad Stein, who we're friendly with, um, he said, you know, because they're allowed to coach now, he said, Tommy, you dropped your level. And Tommy was able to kind of snap back into a higher level coming down. I think he was down 4-1 in the second set, bring that back. And then he just battled and he just played super well. Like he's obviously put in the work now to be physically fit enough to hang with Carlos for that long. Just going deep in those rallies. You know, you'd see these rallies that are like 10, 15 shots and you wouldn't see Tommy bail out of them um, as you might expect because Carlos was a beast, but Tommy was able to sit in there and just go toe to toe physically with Carlos, which is crazy. Um, interesting quote from Carlos about uh, why he felt he lost this match. And I quote, I felt the pressure to be the number two seed in this kind of tournament, number four in the world, Alcaraz said in his post-match press conference. Quote, it was the first time that I felt that pressure and I couldn't handle it. Interesting. Nobody's immune to pressure. That's what we're learning here. You know, when you're Carlos and you're 18 earlier in the year and you have a lower ranking and you're just the absolute underdog in all of these matches um, that he won, you can just play with no weight on your shoulders. It's the most classic storyline in tennis. Now he's in the number two seed in this tournament. He's playing a guy, Tommy Paul, who's 24, 25, and Carlos is the big favorite to win this match. 
now he's got pressure. Now he's got something to lose. So that is that is an absolute fact that everyone, nobody's immune to that. Um, you know, I think we got a little bit too hyped with Carlos being like, he's going to keep playing like this forever. No, he's not. He's going to have to figure it out. Um, like Stefanos, who we'll get to in here in a second, you know, you start to accumulate these scars and pressure and you got to figure out ways to deal with it. And he will. I'm not worried about Carlos at all. He made the he made final of Hamburg, final of Umag, um, you know, made quarters of, or sorry, I guess fourth round at Wimbledon. He's going to be fine. And I think on the hard courts, he's going to be great, but he's just got to learn to play a bit more free and play like the underdog in these matches, even where he is the, the favorite. So that's super interesting though. What do you guys think about that? Are you worried about Carlos? Now talking about Stefanos, that's maybe the worst loss of all three of these. Stefanos was just to Jack Draper, who's a great young player, great player, hits big. Um, but Stefanos has, has kind of had like an up or down year and he's lost five matches, I think, to guys who are younger than him. He's only 23 and he's lost five matches to guys who are younger than him this year. Runa at the French Open, Alcaraz twice, um, I think Barcelona and where else? Maybe India Wells or Miami, I forget. Um, Draper that now and then Felix in Rotterdam final. So to me, Stefano, you know, he said he won a grass court tournament in Mallorca. He won Monte Carlo Masters. He made the semifinals of the Australian Open. But he's had an up or down year. And I feel like the kid, especially with the Kyrgios loss, I feel like the kid is acquiring demons. Like just these, these times where he's just not able to get over the line uh, against players. Maybe he should be like like Draper or, you know, when he mentally cracked against Kyrgios at Wimbledon. He's acquiring demons. And I think that happens to a lot of players for sure. And, you know, players go through tougher spat spells years even you know you, th you think back to Nadal, Djokovic, Federer they've all had tougher years on tour where they've had a lot of bad losses so I don't think it's cause for real concern again for Sitsipas. he's just a pro tennis player now 23 years old um, and you know he ranked five in the world so he, he's obviously going to be fine but he is acquiring demons and acquiring damage and that's a tough loss for him so Anyways, those are the big three losses. Which one surprised you most? What are your thoughts on them? Felix Ajay Ali Seem, is he now the favorite to win it? The Canadian kid? Electric last night in Montreal. I'm calling him the king of Montreal. Montreal, as we would say. Uh, Sinner's still in. Kyrgios is still in. Fritz is still in. Chilich is still in. Um, Pablo Carreño Bustas is chopping players up. He beat Berrettini in like half an hour, it seems. So there's a lot of talent in this draw still, and we're going to have an interesting winner of this Masters 1000 as has become totally normal now. Uh, I think big three have only won one uh, Masters one this year, uh, and that was that was Rome, Djokovic winning in Rome. So the the Masters 1000 tournaments are now kind of the tournaments of the next gen players, and we're gonna see that big time here. Obviously, none of them were, none of the big three were in this tournament, but now we got even none of the top three seeds left. So we're gonna see who steps up to the plate and takes this championship in Montreal, and I can't wait to see it. So there's our thoughts. That's The Slice presented by Points Bet Canada. Thanks for subscribing and heading over and following at The Slice Tennis on Twitter for all your updated needs. We'll see you soon.